Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Meg Healy. And I'm Kate Zynard. Today on the podcast, we're talking about pants. That's right. Pants. It's Pants Sober <laughs> on SewDaily.com. We'll discuss trends and silhouettes and fabrics, then we'll go over our own personal favorites. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, then we'll answer our listener question. But before we begin, how are you doing, ladies? Doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is I don't know an acceptable answer? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's a fine answer. I've been sewing a lot. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah been... I sewed something for the first time in like two weeks, like this morning. I was like, I just need to like, I can't just have like a full on computer day again. I just like, I just whip something out and then I feel like so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me. Yeah. I think we've just been in a busy yeah. crunch mm-hmm. with work and such. And yeah, there's something about like just taking a break from the screen, doing something really tactile, mm-hmm. cranking up some music. I don't yeah. know. Just it uses a different part of the brain, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, mm-hmm. we had a, a kind of a gray morning this morning and the temperature is dropping a bit. And so I'm I'm feeling a lot of that like sitting on me like. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this will get me perked up for the day because certainly I enjoy doing these podcasts with you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Last, yeah. Last night we were sitting outside and uh, my friend was over and I was just saying like, oh, I haven't like made anything in like weeks. It's been weeks since I even opened my sewing machine. And she's like, so you just like haven't been working? Like, how do you get work done? I'm like, I wish my work was just (laughs) sewing the entire day. All day, every day. (laughs) I'm like, oh, there's actually a lot of computer work. I need to like write about what I sew and like do other stuff. (laughs) I do want to say- for the record, having done a job where I sew all day, every day, it is not oh. always quite as fun as it oh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> You know what? That is true. You know what? The grass is not always yes. greener. Yeah. At, that, at that point, you want your, you want your, you know, screen break. <laughs> that's, oh. Yes. <laughs> it's hard on your body too. Yeah. Yeah, no, for that's sure. true. Mm-hmm. And your fingers. But what if it's sewing for yourself all day, every day? <laughs> okay. Well, that I don't know because that is not a job I have ever done. <laughs> I don't, I don't know who would pay me for that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's goals. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe someday. 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 (laughs) Oh, geez. Well, have you sewn pants lately? (laughs) I'm trying to segue into our (laughs) sewn pants. I, I, yeah. I have not sewn. Okay. That's the total lie. I did sew some pants this summer. I sewed more nini culottes. Mm -hmm. Can you even guess? But I'm definitely, I have um, some jeans on my to-do list. So I feel like this conversation is much needed. I'll get my juices flowing. I think I might be ready for it. I love sewing pants, by the way. Yeah, I love sewing pants too. And I haven't sewn jeans in so long, but I'm so excited. We're we're doing this um, kind of live workshop, kind of watch party event for making your own jeans coming up. So I'm going to be working on that where it's not a jeans pattern that we're all sewing, but I'm going to be showing like the technique of, you know, knocking off or copycatting your like favorite fitting ready to wear jeans into a pattern so that you can remake it. I've, I've done it years ago when we learned this technique in school, but I haven't done it recently because now like my, my, my favorite jean that I knocked off was like so many years and so many like pants silhouette style trends ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these are like called like the highest mom waist jeans and I love them. And so I'm so excited to share the process of like, getting the pattern and then making them again. I'm yeah, so I'm getting really excited about that and making jeans again. I've done that in so long. Yeah. You know, I um I just did a little bit of copycatting and mostly I do it for my daughter. Like if she oh, has that's a, a good garment, idea. Yeah. Then I'll then I'll knock it off. But I've never done anything as complicated as jeans. But mm-hmm. I will say that right now my favorite jeans are the ones I've made. So Oh yeah. well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. But I need more of them. So there's <laughs> that. 
So while we're talking jeans, while we're talking pants, why don't we talk about some kind of big picture fashion trends? And I know you've got some good stuff for us, Meg. Mm -hmm. Going back to sort of the, uh, I was reflecting back on the trends episode and kind of just narrowing in on Mm -hmm. specifically the pants that we've seen in the trends. And so I kind of broken down this section into two parts. So like the the pant trend silhouettes and styles, and then go into kind of pant fabric choices and prints and colors. So the first thing is that what I found is that we're kind of gearing away from leggings and, uh, I'm sorry, no, we're gearing towards leggings, sorry, and not so much sweatpants. Like leggings are really big Hmm. kind of coming into this season. And it's, it was really interesting to see because you would see so many silhouettes down the runway and you'd see really kind of high-waisted, that kind of classic trouser slack. You wouldn't see a lot of just kind of fitted pants. It would either be wide leg, wide leg trousers or really skinny, like, legging pants. Not It would be not just only leggings, but they wouldn't be jeggings or anything. Like, they wouldn't have, like, a fly or anything. It would be kind of even, like, a really, really stretchy woven with an invisible, like, really tight or, like, trousery, which I thought that was mm. so... So interesting, kind of that in between. I think maybe people are kind of getting away from those actual sweatpants. And so kind of what are what else is comfortable is leggings and large trousers. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's kind of a um, a natural transition in from just kind of like a sweatpant type thing. So I pulled some patterns that I thought were kind of a good representation of the trouser silhouettes that I was seeing. And so the Jacqueline trousers by Vicky Sews mm-hmm. are that really a nice little classic style that I really like. And also the Sorel trousers by Pauline Alice kind of really captured what I was seeing on the runway as well. So I thought those were two kind of good selections, just kind of that wide leg, maybe that crease, you know, some details, some pleats, um, kind of really flowy fabrics. And oh, I need to make some of these. I haven't made like anything wide leg that isn't like elasticated in the waist. Yeah. (laughs) But what I love about the The Jacqueline trousers is that the back is actually elasticated. So the front is the trouser look. Mm -hmm. um, And it has like a fly front zipper, but the back still has that elastic insertion. So you still have a little bit of that comfort. So I I really love those patterns. And I'll put some links in the show notes. There was another breakdown from who, what, where of some fashion trends. And I, and pulling these, I didn't reference specifically one. I, I scrolled through about five or six and kind of note noted ones that popped up on every single one of them. Mm-hmm. So it was a consistent trend through all of the kind of trend spotting websites. So I thought that was interesting. And then for the leggings kind of style, it's, I, you know, there's always, you know, the leggings patterns that are just kind of kind of there for, you know, like, like our, what are the Loveland leggings Loveland. and mm-hmm. like yep. really meant for knit, but there's also patterns. Like I loved this one from Vogue. Cause it's more of like a, a legging pant mm-hmm. where you can make those really stretchy wovens into, but it has a legging look, but it's not just like, you look like you're wearing leggings. So it's, it's kind of a weird thing between like really skinny jeans and then like leggings, but they're, com- you know, so. I wonder, is that kind of like a, like a pull-on pant? Yeah, 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 yeah. It would be. Because I've seen them called that. Yeah, a pull-on pant. That's a, yeah, that's a great word for that. So I think that those are like the two big silhouettes uh, of this coming fall for pants. And um, question on the trousers, because I've definitely noticed those mm-hmm. cropping up. I have some personal thoughts about them, but I wondered, are you seeing like a wide leg trouser or a tapered leg trouser or a little bit of both? I say a little bit of both. Okay. Definitely wide leg is big, but then that kind of that straight, like that classic, I wouldn't say I've seen anything coming too tapered into the Mm -hmm. leg. Like you wouldn't, if I were to look at a pattern, I wouldn't see the side swing either the side seam, sorry, swing in past the hip. It would either go straight down or out. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what I would, uh, 
I would say. But I do love like a tapered uh, trouser as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you can put your own spin on it too if it's um, whatever you like. But yeah, so kind of just like a semi-slim straight fit or a wide leg. Oh, you know. I noticed um, on these on these two that you had as examples of the silhouette that I think both of them went down to the ground. Like they're, oh, yeah. they're yeah. ground exactly. That's a good point, Kate. Yeah. I was like, wow. I might my might, might want to have mine up an extra inch or two <laughs> just so they don't get too dirty too fast. But I know, um, right? A eh? that's the thing with long pants and mm-hmm. you know, a Canadian winter when it gets yeah. like that super slushy out. Oh, it's yeah. just same here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there's like an invention like um like a hem guard or something, like mm-hmm. a plastic like booty that you can put on like I don't know. A little shield. Has this been like invented yet? I wonder. <laughs> like a little, like an, I don't know. <laughs> well, you can always tuck your uh, pants into your rubber boots, but it's not very. I mean, you can. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, that was the original reason for inventing high heeled shoes was to lift your hems off the ground mm-hmm. and, and platforms and that sort of thing. So you could wear like cute, comfy slippers and have it to the floor. Then they'd be like secret slippers and you wouldn't Ooh, see. It'd be comfy. I like this plan. <laughs> Sorry, got you off, man. What were you going to no, say? No, <laughs> I was just going to say like, I I love the trouser trend and yeah. I love the look of like the more tailored pant. I just don't, I don't see myself wearing them on like a regular basis. No? Like they just, they look inherently dressy to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon as you add like pleats at the front and like, I've seen a lot with like a self fabric belt, which I again I love. I just feels a little bit more formal than where I'm at. Yeah. But but I could maybe that is it's like a reaction to the sweats trend. We've mm-hmm. swung to the other side to mm-hmm. that more dressy mm-hmm. end of the spectrum, maybe for sure. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, keeping those creases nice. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, seems like a lot of work. Yeah, seems like you would need to actually it- like. Use your iron for like ironing Non-sewing. and not just for yeah, pressing. After you sew them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that seems horrifying I feel like to me. <laughs> we were talking about that last episode, weren't we? We're talking in our yes. Oh yeah, how we never iron. Unpopular. <laughs> yeah, yes. we never. We only like to iron when it's during the sewing. After it's yes. done, it's like ugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't want to touch it. No, I know. Um, I think if this one's also how you style it too. Like I would still yeah. wear these trousers, but. With, you know, like a chunky cable knit sweater, mm. like could really, you know, make it not so dressy or it just like a, a t-shirt too. I was could hoping really... you would say t-shirt. Yeah. Because I could see myself doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's all I know you style it too. Like obviously, like maybe if you made a matching, you know, blazer and then like or a sequin tie, it would look super dressy. But I would totally wear these. I, I just fear, I just can't go back to like, like a form fitting, just like all the way down the pant. I just like, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be like stretchy or it needs to have room in it. I just, or yeah, I've already donated so many of my pants that have, if it's, I just finally did a nice big like purge of my closet. I'm like, if it doesn't fit me. If I don't feel comfortable in it, I just need to get rid of it. You know, I just, I mean, I probably could upcycle it, but I, I mean, they're perfectly good. It's yeah. not like they're distracted. Yeah, so, so someone else can, I'm sure, um, find, it, they can find a new home for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so let's talk a little bit about like pant fabrics. Mm-hmm. So there are some trends, but the one that stuck out so much and it was in every single report is this kind of that logo love trend mm-hmm. where it's like your pants are kind of like a logo print and either you match it with your top or, you know, it's kind of, they're calling it like reskin your loungewear, kind of putting a designer label or logo on your comfy clothes. And you find a lot, they're not so sweat panty. They're like those tight pants. Uh, a lot of those styles, um, kind of a form fitting legging or like a legging that kind of swings out at like a flared legging too, which I mm. love um, as well, kind of getting a little crossed over between the the trouser too. But that was the biggest one that I saw. Mm-hmm. And then also um, there was there was a lot of, you know, trends for like bright colors, you know, just kind of bringing some happiness back into our wardrobe, like lots of neons and stuff. And there was some kind of 
I really liked there was a trend bloom after dark, which is kind of fall florals for pants, mm. which I think is so cool. Um, because I love fall floral and I love printed pants. I think it's such a fun opportunity to like put a fun print on pants. But another one that I thought that I would totally do is like a a knitted pant, like cable knit pant, Hmm. like a sweater knit all over. I I saw the one I think you're referring to. I was was scrolling through and I was like, that looks so comfy. And it was, it was, it was a little, I don't want to say bizarre. It it just Uh kind of made you stop and go, what now? But at the same time, it looked super comfy. It was really cute. Yeah, I've seen them all over in like fashion influencers on Instagram too. All of these popping up um, and kind of luxury like la- like loungewear. I think the ones that yeah we're referring to, Kate, like those pair of pants were like hundreds of dollars. Oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do not look at the prices when I'm scrolling through those things. <laughs> but yeah, they they look really comfy, and I don't I don't know how to recreate them, but they sure did look comfy. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that was going to be my question. Like, is that, does the knit, does that cross into the kind of athleisure mode in terms of trends? Because that feels, I think knit pants feel sportier to me, but maybe not. I would not say that they're in the athleisure trend because they're more, they're, the knit is so big and so obvious. It's not like, you know, knit fabric that's stretchy. It's like, knit like looking at a sweater and so it Uh felt more it it felt very much like sort of the um the kind of what I think of of as the opera ski look you know after you go skiing and then you're hanging out in your lodge and you're wearing you know your comfy leggings and your big sweater it was kind of like that sort of like I don't know I guess then you wear your knit pants and your um I don't know long sleeve t-shirt or something I I don't know, but it, it definitely had that kind of like sort of upscale. I don't know. It seemed like the kind of thing that you would wear when you would wear a big chunky sweater in the same situation. Mm-hmm. But you probably would Got pair it, it with mm-hmm. a big Got chunky it. sweater. Yeah. Oh, that was a oh, lot you, of words. I would. <laughs> would you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I okay. think that does kind of go into that kind of all over look. Like matching sets are, oh, yes. they have been big. And I think that they are going to continue to be big. But yeah, I so want to buy like a yardage of like a chunky knit um, and then make a pair of like a matching sweater and pants set. Also reminds me of when I used to do, um, I was a, did ballet for 19 years. Uh, and that was, it, that reminded me of like a lot of our warm up gear was like sweaters, sweater mm-hmm. pants, like that. I, I had like that, type, like sweater wraps and like leg warmers and stuff. So that like really reminded me of like my dancing days, like <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you put over your tights before a class. So that kind of, maybe it maybe spoke to me more because I, it was just kind of like a little blast from the past too, but I love like a knitted pant. I think it's so fun. Cozy. I think it's fun too. It seems heavy. Like I'm the practical person. Yeah. It might be. Maybe it depends on what it's made from. I feel uh-huh. like I feel like the ones that I was looking at were they were like a, a real very chunky fabric. So it mm-hmm. wasn't like, you know, if you're knitting with like a sport weight yarn to get something a full pant size like that, it does get really dense. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But the bigger the yarn, you can get a a nice dense without having to do use as much yarn so you don't have as much weight if hmm. that made any sense to anybody mm-hmm. i don't know if it made sense to me i know negative uh, information about knitting <laughs> i <just> know <laughs> absolutely nothing i know that i just buy sweater knit fabric and then i make a sweater and then i say yeah i made it then i'm like i didn't know you could knit and then i just said no i don't knit and then they're confused and then it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that before too. Like if you if you happen to find a sweater knit yeah. that actually looks like hand knit. Yeah, those are yeah. such cool fabrics. I yes. think that's so cool how you can buy that by the That was like mind blowing when I first saw totally. that. I, w- I was instantly like, this is so cool. Like you can make like hats and sweater knit. Oh, we should have like a whole podcast episode on like sweater knit fabrics. Not like stretch, but like, what you can make with like sweater knit fabrics. Yeah. Put it on the list. 
<laughs> Put it on the list. I have some lime green, <gasps> like neon green sweater knit fabric that oh. I, maybe pants have to happen. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what to make with it. So how are they not already pants? <laughs> I don't know. It's still, it's still kind of warm. It's getting cooler. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Here it's still like warm out. I, it's nice and sunny out today. So it's, I know it's just kind of that thing. I was like, I want to put a scarf on, but it's like not too hot it's too hot out and then Mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna be five foot in the snow and then complaining that I just want to wear you know shorts shorts (laughs) yeah (laughs) linen everything the the theme of this episode is the the grass isn't always greener exactly (laughs) pants aren't always greener (laughs) in my case they are always greener on this (laughs) (laughs) Meg's pants are always greener (laughs) oh all right so that was kind of just like a little Short and sweet recap. Trousers, kind of form-fitting legging types, cable knit, kind of a logo, and florals, if you want. Awesome. Well, I was, uh, we did cover pants last year on the podcast, and we took more of kind of a a TNT type approach, talking about some of our favorites. And I wondered, did, did anything change for you in the last year in terms of your pants making? Do you have new favorite patterns? Did you did you find yourself gravitating to a different silhouette in the last year? So I'm going to say a, a pretty hard no. <laughs> no changes for me. Um, I have not, um, I have not managed to continue with my attempt to make a pants sloper. It's just I don't have the I don't have the inspiration for it right now and I'm not going to force myself to do it if I'm not feeling good about it. And I have only sewn pants this year that I have already sewn and I continue to love them. And that's pretty much where I stand. I I am still very hesitant about most pants patterns because uh especially the kind that are coming in now, the the sort of tailored trouser look because I have such a weird body shape, nothing ever fits right. And so until I get that sloper figured out so that I can, you know, make whatever adjustments I need to make to make it fit me, there's really no point. Um, It's just going to be frustration. So I just look at the pretty patterns and think, gosh, it would be nice to wear that. And then I don't make them because I don't want to waste fabric and time and just be frustrated and angry because I can't make pants that fit Uh me in a way that I feel comfortable with. Now somebody talk about something less depressing. I will say, (laughs) okay. well, I was going to say, like, I feel like you could probably take like the Nini's and make some design adjustments and have them look more trouser-esque, you know, like some pleats in the front. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's my favorite thing to do. And I have done that with the Pagosa pants, actually. I've done them at full length. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't particularly like the fabric I used for them, so they're not my favorite pants, but but it worked. So, yeah, I could I could try yeah. that. And I guess the Ninis are, you know, that wide-legged um, style, so. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. I feel like I definitely get in kind of a pants run rut more than any other kind of pattern mm-hmm. rut like i i tend to make the same pants over and over again because i like them and they work for me and i can make design adjustments to kind of go with whatever style is in at the moment and i do that a lot and then just forget to try other new ones so yeah. i should probably put that on the list of goals this year i do think that over the last year, I made a lot more kind of athletic friendly pants, mm-hmm. um, largely for skating and for lounging. Um, I did make a couple versions of the Hudson pant by Ooh. True Bias. And I hadn't made that in a while, but Kelly released a high rise pattern hack to to bring up the rise Did on she? those. Yeah. Oh, I so, need to check that out. Yeah, I made have to those. Link that. Yeah. We'll do that. I made some in um green velvet. I don't <gasps> think I ever posted a full pic on my How, Instagram feed. Yeah. But I need to see these. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll do it. I just got a little camera stand. So I will be back in business with some more actual finished photos. 
The other thing I did more this year is I made more costume type pants because I was doing more um, like skating events Mm -hmm. where you dress up. And that was really fun to just it had been a long time since I had made anything costumey. And it's not that they were super costumey. It's just that they were in fabrics that I wouldn't normally use for pants like that. I definitely made more overalls this year. And Mm. I um, love overalls so much. Um, I think the thing that I didn't make a lot this year was kind of like the high waist, rigid denim jeans and pants. And I think we all know why. Like, Mm -hmm. definitely comfort became a big, you know, thing in the last year. And yeah. I think that's, those are kind of the big picture changes, I think, in my pants making. Mm -hmm. How about you, Meg? Any major trends? I think, well, I, I, I became like a big Nini head last year. I made so many. (laughs) And I think I'm a little Nini'd out. Yeah. So I, I actually, I've been scrolling through because I was trying to think about this and I've really ventured out and made a lot of different pants patterns, but it is kind of scary. Like it's, it's easier. I feel like to just oh, try this new brand or this new silhouette of top. It just seems like not as like scary than yeah. pants. Like pants. It just uses yeah. so much fabric and it's such, I, yeah, I feel like it. they're just, you know, they're harder to to fit. And if you're, if you don't feel good in your pants, it, it just kind of, you know, a top can kind of be, you know, like, eh, you know what, it's a little like, but pants, it really like, it's a, outfit and mood killer if you don't feel good and mm-hmm. comfortable and confident Agreed. in themselves. But that being said, I'm like, I I really branched out to lots of different silhouettes and new brands. I'm actually wearing right now the Luna pants by Made by Ray. They're super mm-hmm. comfy. I made them in like a fleece um, sweatshirting fabric. I made the I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but ready to sew. It's the Papeo wrap pants. Yes. They are super fun. It's a, what a fun silhouette. The wrap style. Like I, I made them in, um, I actually, I kind of like, uh, did a, a fashion, whatever toy I love them. I had this leftover black tool fabric and I was just testing it out, but it ended up turning out so good, uh, that I hadn't made an, another one. And I actually just wear the, there, there's another example of what I made my yeah. <laughs> wearable, wearable muslin. And I've made the, the, by victory patterns, the Esther pants, amazing pleated front pants. I actually wore those out to a birthday dinner a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was my first time being out and like sitting inside a restaurant in like two years. And I got like so many compliments on my pants. It was amazing. I also made the Pomona pants. Oh my, so many P words. And yeah. <laughs> Pomona pants by Anna Allen, which mm-hmm. I think that's kind of my new TNT. They're not as, they're the kind of same like for me, I love that I still keep wearing my Ninis. I've just made so many of them and where I have like enough of that silhouette, but I really love the Pomona, the tapered silhouette. It's that, but I love how it doesn't have a side seam. Yeah. It's really smooth cool. over the leg and the one pocket in the back, but it's still a relaxed fit. It's a nice high waist with an elastic. So I've made two of those so far, one in a linen and one in like a silver kind of tensile. And I really like, I think of that's like my new kind of go-to, my new Nini. <laughs> Your new Nini. <laughs> my new Nini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I really need to branch out. I really yeah. do. Because I, yeah, I have to, I just keep making them um, because you know what works and you know what you mm-hmm. like and you know what exactly. you actually wear. But it's good to branch out and mm-hmm. try new things. I might know the answer to this for you, Meg, based on your story that you just told, but do you have a favorite pair of pants you made this year so far? I feel like it's, it's not my most worn pant, but it's my favorite. And it's the, uh, the Esther pants by Victory Patterns because it's like a green, I think I, uh, it's on my Instagram. It's what I paired with my Oso tank. Okay. Um, Yeah. Those ones. Yeah. I think those are my favorite because I, I forgot about them for a while. And I pulled them out for this day. I was like, I forgot about these. And I was like, I love these pants and I need to make. So those are my favorite pants this year. Nice. Nice. Um, mine are, it's between 
two pairs of ninis and one <laughs> is my um, gold velvet pair that I made. It's a stretch velvet, made it for skating, made a matching top. Again, I don't think I ever shared like a finished picture on my Instagram feed, but I kind of feel like you could, I could wear those to like, you could dress up oh. wide leg velvet pants. Oh, mm-hmm. one thousand or, percent yes. or you could wear them with roller skates like yes. yeah i kind of love them they're they're magical um especially with i have actually two matching tops that go with it oh um, even better also even better. in gold velvet but i also made uh earlier in the summer i made some yellow gingham linen ninis <gasps> and i love those they're like my golfiest pants <laughs> i own <laughs> and i love them i i now that I, I've had them for a few months, I haven't worn them a ton because I never really know what to wear. Like, what do you pair with gingham? And it usually ends up being something pretty casual. So I don't actually look like I'm headed to the golf course. But <laughs> I love them. They were like, they were a stretch for me, like gingham pants. I feel like they had a nice little moment there. And they're just, they reminded me, like, just have some fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Yeah. And when I wear them, I feel a little silly, but all like in the best way possible. Like, yeah, I made my pants. <laughs> I, I haven't made anything. I don't think I have made anything gingham. I need to get on the gingham train, you know? <laughs> I need to- <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to, um, I sewed a lot of gingham this summer now thinking yeah, about did. it. Yeah, you did. You really did. did. I, ma- I don't know. That felt like... It just felt like what I wanted to do felt like a little bit of a stretch. You know, it wasn't like a solid or a stripe. So I broke out, but I definitely uh-huh. did like all neutrals aside from the yellow, <laughs> yellow, which is kind of a neutral. Yeah. But well, I um yeah. I also want to do an honorable mention. I I can't believe this blanked my mind when thinking about pants this year, but I well, I also made s- two pairs of the the Collins wrap culotte pants oh, yes. from the new So Quick and Easy volume two. That is a fabulous pants pattern as well. I can't believe I forgot about it. I think because it was, I was thinking about what I've been kind of sewing for kind of my own wardrobe and for fun that I forgot about like what I'm sewing for work. <laughs> yes. These pants that I develop, I am obsessed with them. Like a round wrap hem um, in the front that you can do a contrasting binding or there's facing pieces. I love those pants and I wore them I wore them a lot uh, during the summer. They're not really a fall. I, I, yeah, I mean, you I was could wondering. make them for fall, but you'd have to wear like because t- they can they get kind of exposed um, when you walk in them. So you could wear. I mean, they could look really cool if you wore tights under them yeah. and then, like boots. Like you could totally rock them in the fall, but it's just another honorable pant mention. <laughs> totally, can, they're, and they're free. They they're are free, free to download. <laughs> and there there are feature pattern, our yes. feature free pattern for yeah. pants month. So grab those. Because mm-hmm. I think those would also be like a really nice just pajama loungewear oh, pant. But totally. I, I love the idea of wearing like kind of a fun, bright, tight yes. underneath them. And oh. then that peeks out while you're walking. Like yeah. it's pretty. Or even an over fun. the knee boot you could wear. Because then you, yes. uh, you know, yeah. and you can adjust how far you sew down like the opening uh, mm-hmm. as well to kind of modify how much leg you want to see when you walk. But I think totally a pair of tights underneath that would be super cute. Now I want to make a fall pair. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I think like a black, like silky pair would be yes. super fall. Or even like a, <gasps> a sequin pair would be awesome. That would be amazing. Ooh, okay, okay. Wheels are turning. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the goal for that's, sure. Oh, that's the goal. Okay. Yep. Let's um let's take a quick yeah. break and then we'll hop back in with some sojo. All right. We are back and we are ready to talk about our sojo. Sojo mm. is what's giving us our sewing mojo at the moment. So we always love talking about it and kind of expressing our inspiration. So, Amanda, why don't you get us started today? What's your sojo? Well, I think it happens this time of year, every year. I just, I get into collared shirt making mode and I actually, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I just, we've discussed this before. Like, I still feel like I like making collared shirts more than I like actually wearing them. <laughs> so I need to find a good, like. I have a couple in mind, actually, that 
that are kind of like not as collared, not as formal looking. Um, but I'm I'm gonna venture out and make my husband some collared shirts. <gasps> nice. And I'm really excited. I've got some fabric on the way. So yeah, that's I think I gotta get you gotta get in the right mode for that. Oh yeah. Um it's so it's such a process. Yeah. And I'm gonna be using a new pattern. So I'll need to need to really focus and actually read the instructions and stuff. So there's that. <laughs> I hate when you have to do that. I know. Yeah, I, have, I, I have discovered I really don't like reading the instructions. And I think that's why I like to make the same thing yeah. over and over and over again. <laughs> or just sit with the instructions for a while and then make them and, and know basically what I need to do rather than like go back and forth. Anyway, deep thoughts about sewing process. <laughs> but the other thing that... um I, I remembered that I had been thinking about the other day is I have a couple of people in my feed. I've got a lot of people in my Instagram feed who are expecting and a lot of them are wearing like really cute knit overalls, like <gasps> sweatpants overalls. Oh my gosh. And I, I was like, I don't know if there's a good pattern for that. If anybody has any recommendations, like I'm sure you could Take a basic overall pant, and if you're working with a pretty stable knit, it wouldn't be that big a transition. And we have the the Moonstone jumpsuit, which kind of has like an overall type look to yeah. it. Um, but I really kind of want something big and comfy like that. But I I didn't a, a pattern didn't pop into my mind immediately. And also, I don't know, like, can you wear those out if you're not expecting? I mean. Who cares? Totally. But yeah. But it just occurred to me like that's a kind of overall I don't have yet in my collection. So I might need some. Mm. Sounds cozy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally cozy, totally comfy. Uh, I, you just reminded me about that pattern, the Moonstone jumpsuit. I, yes. I, I, I just re back got on my radar. I, I, I've always wanted to make one. I'm mm -hmm. looking at my stash right now. I'm like, what could I have enough? Fat? I could even pay. You know what? I could, do, I could do a waistline seam so it looks like a two piece outfit. Totally it's really a jumpsuit. Okay, that's what oh, I'm yeah. doing. <laughs> oh yeah, and I, I mean, I feel like that one too. I think was the original made in a sweater knit, or was it just? Did it have that? It was look? a sweatshirting. It was like okay, a knit. A yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe either a jersey or like a sweatshirting knit, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's definitely get gave that sweatpant overall vibe. Oh, yeah. that's such a good idea. That's yeah, so comfy. Yeah, I tried those Moonstone that Moonstone jumpsuit on for like thirty seconds, and I it was amazing. They were so comfortable. So. <laughs> <laughs> what should we talk about? My sojo. Yeah, yes, what, Meg, what is your sojo? Oh, jeez. Well. <laughs> I actually just got my sojo back today and I had this Berta. It's a new, one of the new Berta Easy releases. It's like a really, it's like a nice home robe. And I made it in this like silky green fabric. And so now I have a green silk robe that mm, nice. I'm going to basically probably live in for, that's like the, always the first thing I put on in the morning and mm -hmm. at night, it's just like a robe. So I'm just kind of into like luxury home stuff. <laughs> but I'm also just trying to figure, like, I have still some patterns cut out. They're right behind me. I have still a peasant, a uh, Penrose peasant blouse cut out and I have a Pietra pants cut out. And I just want to like finish sewing them because I know if I just keep them cut out till next season, I'm not going to sew them. So I'm just going to sew them and then put them away for spring and then I'll have already new, new clothes next for next spring. Yeah. I've already sewn. Are you, nice. what are your plans? Like, are you going to, are you going to try to cut yourself off? Cause at some point you're going to have to like pack up your sewing space, right? I know. Eventually I need to, uh, yeah, I haven't thought about that. I, yeah. I, I think I'm going to be so, the movers are going to be coming <laughs> and I will be sewing and they'll be like, ma'am, we need to back up this sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know. I feel like it's the last section of our loft of yeah, pack, probably. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're going to have no dishes and everything, but I'll still have, like, my scissors and, like, <laughs> yeah. my thread out. Priorities. We'll see. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> what about you, Kate? Yeah. Well, if you remember the last uh, time we recorded, I had a sudden Sojo come back from listening to our episode before that <gasps> about wanting yeah. to clean my sewing space. 
So that's kind of an ongoing project. Um, and right now I'm almost at a stopping point because there is there is some organi- there are some organizational changes that I believe will be very soon. Um, and once those happen, I can start figuring out where to put those last things and how to reorganize stuff. But the the big point, the big exciting thing is we got a storage space uh, last week. And so that <gasps> bed nice. is going into my sewing space. The guest bed is because we never have guests and it just takes up room. So um, I'm yeah. getting the bed yeah. out. Wait, the, the bed is going into the storage space. Got it. And it's so, going into the storage space. Got it. Yes. And so bed is going into the storage space, which means I think if the trip to Ikea works out the way I think it's going to, I think my <gasps> serger and my embroidery machine are coming down to live in my sewing room. And I'm so excited. Yay. Yay. So, that is awesome. I know. So I'm not really sewing right now because there's other places in my house that also need to be cleaned. And so that's my big focus. Though I did make a deal with myself that if I sew for, or if I clean for a certain amount, if I've got the energy, I can then sew for the same amount if I want. Aww. But right now it's, it's basically about keeping this room or kind of getting this room under control and getting it ready for the whole new situation, which will hopefully be coming very soon. So. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I, That's I love really that. exciting. And now <laughs> when I can travel again, I know I have a, a bed in your storage unit. It'll you have nice. a bed in my storage <laughs> unit. <laughs> <laughs> well, my sister-in-law pointed out that, I mean, it's a single bed and that's fine if you're traveling or whatever, but my sister-in-law oh, yeah. pointed out, we've got an air mattress that's double-sized, you know, yeah. we've got a queen-size air mattress. Love an air mattress. In the in worst case scenario, you just blow up the air mattress somewhere and it's not quite as good for sitting on as a actual bed, but, you know, we can even have two people sleep in it. Ah, so... Yeah. And if you're like me, you don't really, yeah, you don't really want house guests. You're like, yeah, oh, I don't really have room. You might have to stay at the hotel, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, we don't have a lot of like single people in our lives who are likely to come over and need to stay at our house. So it there's, there's not a really a whole lot of use for it. So we decided we didn't need to have it in here. We're going to get rid of our guest room too. Maybe it's just because during the pandemic, people People just didn't travel. And so you sat in your house and there was like a room dedicated to guests that never came. And so, yeah, we're we're kind of doing the same thing. We're we're going to be going the air mattress route. Well, anyway, I'm just I'm just very excited by the prospect of of having all of my sewing machines in the same room. (laughs) <laughs> very exciting. Yes. Yeah. It's like when, yeah, when we eventually move, it's like, do I want, if we have an extra room, is it going to be a spot for guests or like my walk-in closet? And yeah, <laughs> I feel like I know what it's I want. Call. <laughs> <laughs> I love, this is, uh, you know, this pants tober, but also where your guests can sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Variety show. Variety yes. show. <laughs> oh, geez. So let's move on to our uh, So and Tell segment. Um, At the moment, we are answering listener questions. And the question that we have uh, this week is, what are your Halloween sewing plans? It's October, Mm. y'all. It's time to think about Mm -hmm. Halloween. I love this time of year. And I have to tell y'all, I think I've mentioned that my family, we're doing a family uh, costume. And oh, did have I you? mentioned this? I Not think to me, so, but I forget. We're doing we're doing uh, the Princess Bride. Oh, for, right. for as oh. Long, I mean, I have to bribe my kids to to do this because they, mm-hmm. of course, want to all be ninjas. And I'm like, guys, group <laughs> costume. <laughs> so I was going to make my daughter like a nice Princess Buttercup dress, like a red gown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we went to the thrift store this weekend. And found her the most perfect (gasps) red gown with, like, gold accents. It fits her perfectly. What? It was handmade by someone. Like, (gasps) bless you, someone, whoever you are. And I was actually kind of struck. Like, there were so many 
handmade costumes there. And I don't know if they're from like people making costumes. There were definitely some that seemed a little bit more like maybe that been made for theater, for plays and things, mm-hmm. but there were so many handmade costumes and I am just, I'm so thankful that I don't have to make her a costume from scratch. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be I doing would... lots of other sewing for our costumes, but, but I think I'm going to keep it minimal and focus on like refashioning and making yeah. things yeah. work. I think I will be sewing like an extra finger onto a glove because my youngest son is going to be the six fingered man. Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> he just got that stuck in his head. So yeah, I'll Aww. be adding a finger to a glove eventually, but trying to keep it minimal in the off chance that one of my children backs out at the last minute. Mm. Uh, Cause that's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Is your husband getting involved too? Are you dressing him up? Yes. He will be Andre the giant. Nice. <laughs> and I will, I think I'm gonna, I was, I was like, maybe I should make him like a, a peasant blouse, like for a dude. <gasps> yes. But then I don't know. Maybe I will. I don't have a pattern or anything, but I could do it in muslin and it'd be perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But I, I was thinking about maybe doing, um, if I could find a men's shirt and like taking off the collar and adding a little tie and like a button up oh, shirt. Oh yeah. I feel like I could mm-hmm. refashion that pretty easily and not have to make it from scratch, but we'll see where we get to. We definitely usually have big plans and then run out of time. What's our standard? Yeah, sounds pretty. Normal. I I'm sorry. I I have to ask. We we know who your husband and your daughter and your youngest son are being. I need to know who the middle son and you are being in this <laughs> okay. story. Middle son is the man in black. He's going to be Wesley. Aww. And black is his favorite color. Is it? I don't know what that, yeah. I don't know what that means for him. Uh, it, means he, but, he, it means he takes after his mother. Yeah, I was he does. like, he's, he, <laughs> he loves black. I'm like, okay. And I will be Inigo Montoya because nice. I have Mandy Patinkin hair. All the time. (laughs) And I found, I have some nice peasant blouses and I found the best leather vest. Oh, I saw that on your Instagram. I I love it. I don't know if vests are going to ever come back in the way that they were around in the 80s, but I I definitely wore it around and I kind of, I was digging it. So Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Fingers crossed we stay the course and we don't have like a last minute ninja princess happening but we'll see <laughs> we'll at least have like two or three players in our theme mm-hmm. nice there you go at least if the majority is yeah, yeah, <laughs> the majority yeah. Rules. i feel like you have to have you I, have yeah. to have two but three is ideal three is ideal that, yeah you know <laughs> oh that's yeah. sweet i i can't get over that you found that the dress oh my gosh oh, i'll have to share a like picture. you don't have to make it that's it's a, that's what perfect How it's perfect. woven and it fits her Perfect. That's amazing. Like, I don't know. It was meant to be. She's lucky in that way. Um, But I'm just, I'm so thankful. I'm like, thank you, sewists out there. Like, I love giving, especially a costume. Yeah. You know, new Mm -hmm. life. For sure. What about you, Kate? What are your Halloween sewing plans? I don't know that I have. Oh, you know what? I do have a Halloween sewing plan and it's not costume related, believe it or not. You know, I always want to wear a costume and then um, I'm at home and I don't yeah. go to parties. I just answer the the door for kids and it's not worth it. So I might throw on a little cape or something if I'm in the mood or, you know, put on black lipstick and say I'm a witch or I don't know what. But um, several years ago, maybe it was maybe just two and it feels like longer. I'm not sure. Baby lock sent out a uh, free project and it's a it's a little I think a wall or something like that and it's it's like a little spider theme so it has an embroidered spider on it and then it's got some little uh, pieced pieces that kind of look like the spider web and it's really cute and for some reason I really like it and I bought fabric with which to make it and then promptly went to Austria because that was 2019. And uh, then last year I didn't 
find the fabric until it was too late. Um, so maybe this year I'll make it. We'll see. I'll see if I can dig out the uh, the project and put a link to it because I believe it's still up free, the pattern and the embroidery design. So yeah, it's real cute. Hope to do that. That'll be cool. Nice. How about you, Mae? I love Halloween. Oh, I see, I am not, I've never really liked Halloween. I just, I, I get scared and spooked easily. I don't like scary movies. Like I would always, my dad and my brother would always go into the haunted houses and I would stay outside with my mom. Mm -hmm. I just, and I don't know. I just am not a big, like Julian and I, we like never really, like we, last year we didn't do anything. We even forgot it was like Halloween last year. Like, oh, cause you know, no one comes to, you know, our loft. Uh, but I'm sure like once, once we eventually have children, I feel like I will get into it a lot more. Totally. I feel, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I'm kind of excited for that. Like for now, I'm just like, I just forget that it's happening. I just, uh, I don't even like decorate. Like I like decorating for the holidays a little bit. I like fall and pumpkins, but like, I just get scared. <laughs> just, <laughs> I, I don't like when all the scary movies are on TV. And like, I just, I don't know. I get spooked easily. I don't like scary things. <laughs> well, maybe, and maybe in your new house, you guys will have some trick-or-treaters. Yeah, right? yeah, maybe. I bet you will. If, if the candy lasts that long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more like, that's the downside. Once it's over, go, you know, all the candy sales happen. And then that's how I celebrate yeah. uh, the on sale bite-sized candy. Well, and <laughs> I mean, Halloween has always been basically my favorite holiday and it's mm. because I always love dressing up. And mm. so even now when I don't dress up, there's still like a certain aspect of that, that I just like, I've never really cared about the scary stuff. Um, I don't like scary movies either. I don't watch them. I don't care. I'll watch the ones on the Disney channel, which are yeah, not in fact I scary. Love, yeah. Kids <laughs> scary movies yes. are the best. Kids not scary movies, scary are, movies are amazing. What's I love them. What's a kid them. scary movie? What's an example of one? Like, like uh, Hocus Pocus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beetlejuice, maybe. I mean, that's not really a kid movie, yeah. but it's kind of silly and whimsical. I've never seen Beetlejuice. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I wish probably I need to start making I would like recommend. A list. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's recommend. Not yes. Would recommend. Uh Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, so I good. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Those are fun. I just just things that are made to be sort of cute, spooky, but without like really trying to scare you and where people don't actually like die because it's for kids. Mm -hmm. That that's that's the kind of stuff that that I really enjoy. So I like I like uh, Halloween episodes of like cartoons and I just, yeah. I, I like, I like kids Halloween. I don't really care much about adult Halloween, yes. I guess what it is, what it comes down to. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anything like Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Just do that. All the whole list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll start to get into it. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> the Disney channel has a whole bunch of, um, of like made for the Disney Channel specific movies that are, you know, kids movies and uh -huh. they're kind of ridiculous and also amazing. And I kind of love them. And sometimes I talk my husband into watching them with me and sometimes I do it when he's not around. So there you are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've said this before on uh, like kind of when we were talking about Halloween, but I think it just is always like a bitter taste when it, uh, it comes up because then, you know, the people that you haven't talked to it come out of the woodwork like, oh, Cole, can you make me this cause? Oh, uh, I want to be there. And they, and they come out of, they come out of the forest and they're sewing, they're sewing friend that they know. I'm like, not like yeah. it's, <laughs> and then they want to do it for, you know, like, so, like, Oh, I'll like bring you a bottle of wine. And I love um, what I, then I spend eight hours on this cause, yeah, you know, exactly. so yeah. I guess it's always been like a, <laughs> I, that's that sort of thing. is very understandable. I mean, I don't, <laughs> yep. I don't have friends who do that because a lot, most of my friends so. But man, I can I can imagine being in a situation yeah. where I would be like, yeah, no. It's not so much anymore. I think they've I've said no so like so many times that they <laughs> I stopped getting stop getting asked. But 
uh, I'm, I am really excited in the future, you know, sewing. I want to sew, do like a matching family costume. I think I could really get into that. So I'll just yeah. save all, I'll, I'll, I'll just cancel it until I can build up and I'll just explode. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> you just go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I don't know if I want to make pants right now, but I definitely want to eat some candy corn. Oh. So I feel like. <laughs> Wait, did you say um, candy corn? Do you actually I like it? I do. I oh. know. I'm in a minority there. <laughs> I know this. But I, yeah. I like it too. Oh, not, how good. Not like, not like in huge. I mean, like I don't want to eat like four bags myself in an hour or anything, but I'll take a handful of candy corn. Sometimes I really want a handful of candy corn. It's rare, but it happens. Yeah. Interesting. I think it's a good sewing snack too, because it doesn't mm. like get super melty or like uh-huh. yeah. transfer colors. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm, I know good. it's, that would be a good unpopular sewing opinion. Yes, unpopular, <laughs> so, unpopular yeah, sewing opinion. But Halloween candy size is so perfect for a sewing studio. You know, you You're just right. want like a little bite. Like they're perfect for like a little candy ball in your studio. Those little like mm-hmm. little grabbies. <laughs> All right. Now yeah. I want candy. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> that was that was a super fun conversation. Yeah. Just a quick reminder. We have so many pants Oh, themed yeah. things happening on SoDaily.com. We've got classes. We've got Meg's new class coming up. We've uh-huh. got the Collins Wrap Culottes, which you can grab and sew right now, as well as a new season of Style Revive that we are midstream and launching. Uh-huh. As well as a new season <laughs> of Style Revive that we're launching. And Meg, I've gotten to um, see a couple of the episodes. I love the challenge aspect. I love yeah. the people that you brought into this season. It's so good. Yeah, it was so much fun to like phone in a friend each episode. I kind of, you know, I, I'm branching out of things that aren't my expertise and I'm getting help from all of the amazing people that I meet through, you know, this podcast and yes. what field we're in and my jaw. It's amazing the, the community and the connections that um, I can now lean on when they advise me on certain things like fabric dyeing and making like a bag out of a pillowcase and hacking, not ha- like upcycling uh, different things. So yeah. And then we are doing a live event for the final episode. I believe it's on November 2nd. And while you're watching the series, if you just, if you get inspired to do anything that I've done or just post it on social media, Instagram and hashtag style revive challenge. And we will um, be looking at the, the tags and then I'll be featuring and kind of talking about the community makes and the challenges that everyone makes. And, you know, there, there's a, there'll be a feature in the magazine. So mm-hmm. if your project could be featured there, if you do a challenge, you know, so yeah, we just, you know, want to get everybody involved if you want to. So it'll be fun. I love that. I'm mm-hmm. going to have to figure out which challenge to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Well, yeah. Super fun episode, you guys. As always, this definitely is the best part of my day. For sure. Getting to <laughs> touch base with you ladies and talk about sewing and candy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Until next time, y'all. Yeah. Happy stitching. Bye. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the Sew and Tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is a Sew Daily podcast and produced by Golden Peak Media. It's hosted and produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Daisha Clay is our producer. Director of podcasts is Jared Mayer. Tiffany Warble is director of content. Kelsey Ratterman handles our marketing. And Andrea Lotz does all things digital. 
If you'd like more information on sponsoring or advertising on So and Tell, go to goldenpeakmedia.com.